As a young man, John B. Gurdon was told by a schoolmaster to avoid science. It was quite the blow for someone with a burgeoning interest in becoming a scientist. Um, and the schoolmaster wrote this report, details of which I can't exactly remember, but the main trust, uh, the main gist of it was that he had heard that Gurdon was interested in doing science um, and that this was a completely ridiculous idea because there was no hope whatever uh, of my doing science and any time spent on it um, would be a total waste of time both on my part and the part of the person having to teach him. So that terminated my, completely terminated my science at school. Decades later, Gurdon leads the Gurdon Institute at Cambridge and, as of today, is a Nobel Prize winning researcher. On Monday, both he and a Japanese scientist from Kyoto University split the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine for their work related to cellular reprogramming. The recognition is just another point in what has become a 50-year journey for the two. The 79-year-old Briton began experimenting with cells in the 1950s, and in 1962, he became the first scientist to clone an animal. In an audacious attempt, he successfully grew a healthy tadpole from an egg of the frog using the DNA of another tadpole's intestinal cell. It was the same year that Shinya Yamanaka was born. He would build on Gurdon's research, and in 2006, Yamanaka showed that it was possible to reprogram mature cells into stem cells, paving a way for stem cell treatments without the controversial destruction of human embryos. One of the points I, I would like to make is that uh, this work I was um, involved in um, had no obvious therapeutic benefit at all. It was a kind of purely a scientific question, do all our cells have the same genes? There was no prospect of that being useful to people. But I think it's crucial in this country that uh, we are able to support basic research and then you wait a while and sometimes a long while and it then turns out that nearly all discoveries of a basic scientific nature will turn out to have some useful consequence. And he plans on continuing his work, envisioning that he will funnel his share of the $1.2 million prize money back into research. Gurdon still has that schoolmaster's report framed on his desk. Perhaps it serves as a bit of motivation, though it's doubtful he needs it to continue researching a field he loves.